The Los Angeles Times, commonly referred to as The Times or LA Times, is a paid daily newspaper published in Los Angeles, California, since 1881. It was the largest metropolitan newspaper in circulation in the United States in 2008 and the fourth most widely distributed newspaper in the country. In 2000, the Tribune Company, parent company of the Chicago Tribune and local television station KTLA, purchased the Los Angeles Times when Tribune acquired its parent company, the Times Mirror Corporation. The Times is currently owned by Tribune Publishing. History Otis Ciro The Times was first published on December 4, 1881, as the Los Angeles Daily Times under the direction of Nathan Cole Jr. and Thomas Gardner. It was first printed at the Mirror Printing Plant, owned by Jesse Arnold and T.J. K. Style. Unable to pay the printing bill, Cole and Gardner turned the paper over to the Mirror Company. In the meantime, S.J. Mathis had joined the firm, and it was at his insistence that the Times continued publication. In July 1882, Harrison Gray Otis moved from Santa Barbara to become the paper's editor. Otis made the Times a financial success. In an era where newspapers were driven by party politics, the Times was directed at Republican readers. As was typical of newspapers of the time, the Times would sit on stories for several days, notably including the 1884 victory of Democratic presidential candidate Grover Cleveland. Historian Kevin Starr wrote that Otis was a businessman, capable of manipulating the entire apparatus of politics and public opinion for his own enrichment. Otis's editorial policy was based on civic boosterism, extolling the virtues of Los Angeles and promoting its growth. Toward those ends, the paper supported efforts to expand the city's water supply by acquiring the rights to the water supply of the Owens Valley in the California Water Wars. A set of events fictionalized in the Roman Polanski movie Chinatown. The efforts of the Times to fight local unions led to the October 1, 1910, bombing of its headquarters, killing 21 people. Two union leaders, James and Joseph McNamara, were charged. The American Federation of Labor hired noted trial attorney Clarence Darrow to represent the brothers, who eventually pleaded guilty. Otis fastened a bronze eagle on top of a high freeze of the New Times headquarters building designed by Gordon and Kaufman, proclaiming anew the credo written by his wife, Eliza. Stand fast, stand firm, stand sure, stand true. Chandler era upon Notice's death in 1917, his son-in-law, Harry Chandler, took control as publisher of the Times. Harry Chandler was succeeded in 1944 by his son, Norman Chandler, who ran the paper during the rapid growth of post-war Los Angeles. Norman's wife, Dorothy Buffum Chandler, became active in civic affairs and led the effort to build the Los Angeles Music Center, whose main concert hall was named the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion in her honor. Family members are buried at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery near Paramount Studios. The site also includes a memorial to the Times building bombing victims. The fourth generation of family publishers, Otis Chandler, held that position from 1960 to 1980. Otis Chandler sought legitimacy and recognition for his family's paper, often forgotten in the power centers of the northeastern United States due to its geographic and cultural distance. He sought to remake the paper in the model of the nation's most respected newspapers, notably the New York Times and Washington Post believing that the newsroom was the heartbeat of the business. Otis Chandler increased the size and pay of the reporting staff and expanded its national and international reporting. In 1962, the paper joined with the Washington Post to form the Los Angeles Times-Washington Post News Service to syndicate articles from both papers for other news organizations. During the 1960s, the paper won four Pulitzer Prizes, more than its previous nine decades combined. Writing in 2013 about the pattern of newspaper ownership by founding families, Times reporter Michael Hiltzik said that, 
The first generations bought or founded their local paper for profits and also social and political influence. Their children enjoyed both profits and influence, but as the families grew larger, the later generations found that only one or two branches got the power, and everyone else got a share of the money. Eventually the coupon clipping branches realized that they could make more money investing in something other than newspapers. Under their pressure the companies went public, or split apart, or disappeared. That's the pattern followed over more than a century by the Los Angeles Times under the Chandler family. The paper's early history and subsequent transformation was chronicled in an unauthorized history thinking big, and was one of four organizations profiled by David Halberstam in The Powers That Be. It has also been the whole or partial subject of nearly 30 dissertations in communications or social science in the past four decades. Modern era The Los Angeles Times was beset in the first decade of the 21st century by a change in ownership, a bankruptcy, a rapid succession of editors, reductions in staff, decreases in paid circulation, the need to increase its web presence, and a series of controversies. In 2000, the Tribune Company acquired the Times, placing the paper in co-ownership with then WB-affiliated KTLA, which Tribune acquired in 1985. For two days in 2005, the Times experimented with Wikitorial, the first wiki by a major news organization to allow readers to combine forces to produce their own editorial pieces. However, they shut it down after a few people besieged it with inappropriate material. In December 2008, the Tribune Company filed for bankruptcy protection. The single copy rate is $2. Since March 2015 the paper increased its daily price 50 cents to match its Sunday, Thanksgiving Day rate. Ownership in 2000, the Times Mirror Company, publisher of the Times, was purchased by the Tribune Company of Chicago, Illinois, ending one of the final examples of a family-controlled metropolitan daily newspaper in the United States. On April 2, 2007, the Tribune Company announced its acceptance of real estate entrepreneur Sam Zell's offer to buy the Chicago Tribune, the Los Angeles Times, and all other company assets. Zell announced that he would sell the Chicago Cubs baseball club. He put up for sale the company's 25% interest in Comcast Sportsnet Chicago. Until shareholder approval was received, Los Angeles billionaires Ron Burkle and Eli Broad had the right to submit a higher bid, in which case Zell would have received a $25 million buyout fee. In December 2008, the Tribune Company filed for bankruptcy protection. The bankruptcy was a result of declining advertising revenue and a debt load of $12.9 billion. Much of it incurred when the paper was taken private by Zell. Editorial changes and staff reductions John Carroll, former editor of the Baltimore Sun, was brought in to restore the luster of the newspaper. During his reign at the Times he eliminated more than 200 jobs, but despite an operating profit margin of 20%, the Tribune executives were unsatisfied with returns, and by 2005 Carroll had left the newspaper. His successor, Dean Bacquet, refused to impose the additional cutbacks mandated by the Tribune Company. Bakke was the first African American to hold this type of editorial position at a top tier daily. During Bakke and Carroll's time at the paper, it won 13 Pulitzer Prizes, more than any other paper but the New York Times. However, Bakke was removed from the editorship for not meeting the demands of the Tribune Group, as was publisher Jeffrey Johnson, and was replaced by James O'Shea of the Chicago Tribune. O'Shea himself left in January 2008 after a budget dispute with publisher David Hiller. The paper's content and design style was overhauled several times in attempts to increase circulation. 
In 2000, a major change reorganized the news sections and changed the local section to the California section with more extensive coverage. Another major change in 2005 saw the Sunday opinion section retitled the Sunday current section, with a radical change in its presentation and featured columnists. There were regular cross-promotions with Tribune-owned television station KTLA to bring evening news viewers into the Times fold. The paper reported on July 3, 2008, that it planned to cut 250 jobs by Labor Day and reduce the number of published pages by 15 percent. That included about 17 percent of the news staff, as part of the newly private media company's mandate to reduce costs. We've tried to get ahead of all the change that's occurring in the business and get to an organization and size that will be sustainable, Hiller said. The changes and cuts were controversial, prompting criticism from such disparate sources as a Jewish journal commentary, an anonymously written employee blog called Telltale and a satirical website, not the LA Times. In January 2009, the Times increased its single copy price from 50 to 75 cents and eliminated the separate California metro section, folding it into the front section of the newspaper. The Times also announced 70 job cuts in news and editorial, or a 10% cut in payroll. In September 2015, in an apparent struggle over localized versus corporate control, Austin Butner, the publisher and chief executive, was replaced by Timothy E. Ryan. On this subject, the Los Angeles Times reported with foresight. For the fun employed, unemployment is welcome. Circulation The Times S reported daily circulation in October 2010 was 600,449, down from a peak of 1.1 million. Some attributed the drop in circulation to the increasing availability of alternate methods of obtaining news, such as the Internet cable TV and radio. Others believed that the drop was due to the retirement of circulation director Bert Tiffany. Still others thought the decline was a side effect of a succession of short-lived editors who were appointed by publisher Mark Willis after publisher Otis Chandler relinquished day-to-day -day control in 1995. Willis, the former president of General Mills, was criticized for his lack of understanding of the newspaper business and was derisively referred to by reporters and editors as the serial killer. Other reasons offered for the circulation drop included an increase in the single copy price from 25 cents to 50 cents and a rise in the proportion of readers preferring to read the online version instead of the print version. Editor Jim Moshe, in an internal memo announcing a May 2007, mostly voluntary, reduction in force characterized the decrease in circulation as an industry-wide problem, which the paper had to counter by growing rapidly online, breaking news on the web and explaining and analyzing it in our newspaper. 2004 Pulitzer Prize winner Nancy Cleland, who took O'Shea's buyout offer, did so because of frustration with the paper's coverage of working people and organized labor. She speculated that the paper's revenue shortfall could be reversed by expanding coverage of economic justice topics, which she believed were increasingly relevant to Southern California. She cited the paper's attempted hiring of a celebrity justice reporter as an example of the wrong approach. In early 2006, the Times closed its San Fernando Valley printing plant, leaving press operations to the Olympic plant and to Orange County. Also in 2006, the Times announced its circulation had fallen to 851,532, down 5.4% from 2005. The Times's loss of circulation was the largest of the top 10 newspapers in the U.S. Despite the circulation decline, many in the media industry lauded the newspaper's effort to decrease its reliance on other paid circulation in favor of building its individually paid circulation base, which showed a marginal increase in a circulation audit. 
This distinction reflected the difference between, for example, copies distributed to hotel guests free of charge versus subscriptions and single copy sales. Internet presence and free weeklies in December 2006. A team of Times reporters delivered management with a critique of the paper's online news efforts known as the Spring Street Project. The report, which condemned the Times as a web stupid organization, was followed by a shake up in management of the paper's website, www.latimes.com, and a rebuke of print staffers who had assertedly treated change as a threat. On July 10, 2007, Times launched a local Metro Mix site targeting live entertainment for young adults. In 2009, The Times shut down Metro Mix and replaced it with Brand X, a blog site and free weekly tabloid targeting young, social networking readers. Brand X launched in March 2009, the Brand X tabloid ceased publication in June 2011 and the website was shut down the following month. Other controversies It was revealed in 1999 that a revenue-sharing arrangement was in place between the Times and Staples Center in the preparation of a 168-page magazine about the opening of the sports arena. The magazine's editors and writers were not informed of the agreement, which breached the Chinese wall that traditionally has separated advertising from journalistic functions at American newspapers. Publisher Mark Willis also had not prevented advertisers from pressuring reporters in other sections of the newspaper to write stories favorable to their point of view. Michael Kinsley was hired as the opinion and editorial editor in April 2004 to help improve the quality of the opinion pieces. His role was controversial, as he forced writers to take a more decisive stance on issues. In 2005, he created a Wikitorial, the first wiki by a major news organization. Although it failed, readers could combine forces to produce their own editorial pieces. He resigned later that year. On November 12, 2005, new op-ed editor Andres Martinez shook things up by announcing the firing of liberal op-ed columnist Robert Shear and conservative editorial cartoonist Michael Ramirez, replacing the two with a more diversified lineup of regular columnists. The Times has also come under controversy for its decision to drop the weekday edition of the Garfield comic strip in 2005, in favor of a hipper comic strip brevity, while retaining the Sunday edition. Garfield was dropped altogether shortly thereafter, following the Republican Party's defeat in the 2006 midterm elections. An opinion piece published on November 19, 2006 by Josh Uemura of Kick a leading neoconservative and a resident scholar at the conservative American Enterprise Institute, was titled Bomb Iran. The article shocked some readers, with its hawkish comments in support of more unilateral action by the United States, this time against Iran. On March 22, 2007, editorial page editor Andres Martinez resigned following an alleged scandal centering on his girlfriend's professional relationship with a Hollywood producer who had been asked to guest edit a section in the newspaper. In an open letter written upon leaving the paper, Martinez criticized the publication for allowing the Chinese wall between the news and editorial departments to be weakened, accusing news staffers of lobbying the opinion desk. The Times drew fire for a last-minute story before the 2003 California recall election alleging that gubernatorial candidate Arnold Schwarzenegger groped scores of women during his movie career. Columnist Jill Stewart wrote on the American Reporter website that the Times did not do a story on allegations that former Governor Gray Davis had verbally and physically abused women in his office and that the Schwarzenegger story relied on a number of anonymous sources. Further, she said, four of the six alleged victims were not named. She also said that in the case of the Davis allegations, the Times decided against printing the Davis story because of its reliance on anonymous sources.
The American Society of Newspaper Editors said that The Times lost more than 10,000 subscribers because of the negative publicity surrounding the Schwarzenegger article. Pulitzer Prizes Through 2014, The Times had won 41 Pulitzers, including four in editorial cartooning, and one each in spot news reporting for the 1965 Watts riots and the 1992 Los Angeles riots. Times sports writer Jim Murray won a Pulitzer in 1990. Times investigative reporters Chuck Phillips and Michael Hiltzik won the Pulitzer in 1999 for a year-long series that exposed corruption in the music business. Times journalist David Willman won the 2001 Pulitzer Prize for investigative reporting. The organization cited his pioneering expose of seven unsafe prescription drugs that had been approved by the Food and Drug Administration, and an analysis of the policy reforms that had reduced the agency effectiveness. In 2004, the paper won five prizes, which is the third most by any paper in one year in the Washington Post in 2008. Times reporters Bettina Boxall and Julie Cart won a Pulitzer Prize for explanatory reporting in 2009 for their fresh and painstaking exploration into the cost and effectiveness of attempts to combat the growing menace of wildfires across the western United States. In 2011 Barbara Davidson was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Feature Photography for her intimate story of innocent victims trapped in the city's crossfire of deadly gang, violence, competition and rivalry. In the 19th century, the chief competition to the Times was the Los Angeles Herald, followed by the smaller Los Angeles Tribune. In December 1903, newspaper magnate William Randolph Hearst began publishing the Los Angeles Examiner as a direct morning competitor to the Times. In the 20th century, the Los Angeles Express was an afternoon competitor, as was Manchester Body's Los Angeles Daily News, a democratic newspaper. By the mid-1940s, the Times was the leading newspaper in terms of circulation in the Los Angeles metropolitan area. In 1948, it launched the Los Angeles Mirror, an afternoon tabloid, to compete with both the Daily News and the merged Herald Express. In 1954, the Mirror absorbed the Daily News. The combined paper, The Mirror News, ceased publication in 1962, when the Hearst Afternoon Herald Express and the Morning Los Angeles Examiner merged to become the Herald Examiner. The Herald Examiner published its last number in 1989. Today the second largest daily newspaper in Los Angeles is the San Fernando Valley-based Los Angeles Daily News.